I've been an Anglican all my life, and for the last nearly 25 years, I've been worshipping, working, and ministering in the Church of England on a national level. So what I say tonight could get me in trouble. Not only am I a member of General Synod, as Martin has just said, but I'm also a member of the Archbishop's Council, which is a a body of about 20 people that uh, advises the Archbishops of Canterbury and York on matters of finance and resources. Um, So I'm going to allow myself a little bit of a fantasy. Uh, The year, fast forward to this future that we've all been discussing or talking, hearing about, is 2035. Um, And Archbishop Hannah has, um, in the first five years of her term, has made significant and radical changes with the agreement of the synods. The first thing she's done is finally tackled the structures and systems that have been hampering and slowing down our mission. She has challenged the status quo that says things have to be the way they are because they've always been that way. And out of the 13,000 parishes that exist, they have been amalgamated into larger clusters so that people can minister and not spend all their time focused on just the maintenance of the keeping the church going. And I'm afraid of the 16,000 church buildings, some of which, quite frankly, are not fit for purpose anymore, and take and drain all the time, energy, money, and goodwill of the people Many of those have now been used for other purposes, some the church still is involved with, but it's the great cathedrals and the larger churches who are now the hubs where there is the ministry, the education, the teaching, and the more formal worship. And the rest of the congregations now meet in one another's homes. So it's now cathedrals and kitchens. And it's much less formal, and usually it's involved with meals as well, which is really important because in 2035, 40% of households will have a single person living in them by themselves. And this will be the older people. People will be older, healthier, living longer. But there will be a lot of single people who will not see people unless they go and meet other people. So radical reorganization, and then the scandal of Christian churches, which only confuses those who are not Christians. What's a Methodist? What's an Anglican? What's a Seventh-day Adventist? Uh, Have agreed to come together and use one another's buildings and resources, and there is no formal, formal unity It's just that they work together and they collaborate on ministry and mission. And they present a front to the world with their distinctive traditions of this is the way we work as Christians because we follow one Christ and we have one message, the gospel. Also, uh, 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 there has been outreach to other faiths And people of other faiths and none, people of good faith, have actually ascribed to a common creed. And this is a bulwark against against the uh, extremists. And so this cuts across, and now you can be friends with people from other faiths um, because we all assent to something about the supremacy of love and respect for one another. But bottom line, what the church has to offer, and the other thing is we're finally taking young people seriously, as Vicky suggests, and it has started already. And we're finally taking the laity seriously. And the teaching and education is for the lay people. They're on the front line. Young people are involved. And deaneries are clustered around secondary schools so that Secondary schools and primary schools are now the focus, and every deanery has a youth worker. 
But the final thing is relationship, because the one thing we always need is relationships. Thank you.